Hi, welcome to another edition of Fleet Momentum video series produced by Automotive Fleet Magazine. I'm Chris Brown, Associate Publisher of Automotive Fleet. This series is designed to put a spotlight on key leaders, trends, and product offerings in the fleet management industry. This episode is sponsored by and produced in partnership with GPS Track It. Today, I'm talking to Charles Crete, CEO of GPS Track It. Charles and I discuss AI, but more specifically, how small to medium-sized companies that use commercial vehicles but don't necessarily have a dedicated fleet manager can employ AI tools to help them better manage their fleets. But before we begin, remember to follow and connect with us on social media and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss future episodes of Fleet Momentum. Hey, Charles, welcome to Fleet Momentum. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me today, Chris. I appreciate it. Hey, sure. Well, start by telling us briefly about GPS Tracket. Yeah, so at GPS Tracket, we're a uh, fleet telematic service provider. Um, we focus really predominantly on um, what we like to call our field services customers, vocational type customers that um, that really are the folks out there that are servicing day-to-day needs of the you know american south american latin american consumer we uh we we kind of cover most of the western hemisphere um as far as that goes but a lot of um most of our customers uh fit into um you know some sort of local sort of hyper local service offering whether that be landscaping whether that be plumbing hvac so on and so forth so we really have developed a system where we think about not so much um uh, like, you know, a person that's going to be like a dedicated fleet manager for a large enterprise or something. But when you think about the owner operator for a business like that, that needs your system to do that much more because they don't have a dedicated fleet manager or something like that. Uh, what we find is by the time we get to the fleet manager, uh, we've got way more than they need because, you know, focusing on that owner operator, I think, gives us a gives us a unique advantage there. Yeah. And that really puts into context what we're going to talk about today, and that's A.I., and really how it's obviously revolutionizing telematics and the fleet industry in general. But really, we can focus on, on how that's going to help the uh, uh, the companies that are running fleets that really don't have a fleet manager. Um, I just want to ask you first, tell us how GPS Track it has integrated AI in its fleet management software and, and what types of functionalities does it enhance? Yeah, that's a great question. So... Um... So again, by focusing on that owner operator, we we look to offload a, a lot of things. So a lot of our AI tools have been uh, designed based on feedback from the owner operator customer. So for example, it would be common for us to say, if you know, you're know you uh, a gentleman that owns a moving company or something like that, uh, and, and, uh, and you wanna make sure that your drivers are driving responsibly, you want to put the tracking system in place. You might want to have like a dash cam solution in place as an example to make sure that they're not texting and driving while operating your company branded vehicles, et cetera. But you probably don't want to be dealing with all the alerts because guess what? People do that, right? So, so if you're getting those alerts and then you, the coaching kind of falls on you as the owner operator of the business, um, that's not a good solution. That's what most of our competitors do. We've taken a different sort of approach where we've said, hey, we're going to use elements of um, what's what's available to us in AI programming right, right now. And we're going to focus on uh, giving a product at the edge that can do that sort of driver coaching. So for example, we've got that intelligent AI built into like our dash cam solution where it's going to give that coaching in real time via an audio and visual cue on the camera itself, in the cab itself. So that the owner operator is responsible for going on to their, their app on their mobile device or their desktop later looking at all the alerts and coming back to the uh, the driver and doing that. So we allow those on our operators to set up sort of levels where they want to be notified. All right, you know, let the camera do this for one set first offense, second offense, maybe third offense. I want to know about it if they just are going to keep doing that. Um, and that's an example of something that, you know, we got direct feedback from um, our customers on. And contrastly, we have a lot in our field services offer, our field sync program where, um, the actual tablet level um, 
um, software that we've developed in order uh, for those folks to engage. There's a lot of work that needs to go uh, go into the customer communication, go into ETA arrival. Customers want to know. The owner operators don't want to be uh, too worried about having that level of communication. Um, and so they've wanted that automated. So a lot of customer communication around route optimization, ETA, efficiency in the platform itself that allows our uh, our owner operators to deliver that to their customers and deliver it to their drivers. Sure. Um, you know, you brought up vid fleet and, and field sync and we're touching on it, but can you go even further just to talk about the operational efficiencies that um, GPS track its clients have experienced really after they've implemented these AI driven solutions? Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, I think, you know, it, it's kind of twofold. When you talk about the operational efficiencies, you really have to talk about it both from the owner operator perspective and then from the enterprise fleet customers perspective, right? Because it's two very different conversations. The owner operator, they want all that capability. They want the camera doing more. They want field sync doing more. They want to offload as much of the communication as they can because candidly, they're busy and they want to worry about whatever their job is, whether that's HVAC or plumbing or landscaping, um, moving, whatever that may be, they want to worry about that. They want to worry about delivering that good experience to their customer and those services to their customer. They don't want to worry about the management of their fleet. So they're looking for all that. And I think we've designed our systems in such a way. Contrastly, to, to, to alleviate that, contrastly, when we're talking to fleet managers, sometimes we have sort of the different conversation around operational efficiencies, which is a lot of fleet managers can get nervous about us sort of automating the job, right? I think it's natural. We've got this fear of AI coming and replacing jobs right now. And for that, we always have the same conversation. I've had this same conversation inside uh, GPS Tracker with my own uh, people and uh, own employees. And we have it with our customers too, which is we always reference something. Uh, it's a really fascinating thing with new technologies called Jevons Paradox. And this came about during the time of the Industrial Revolution, where uh, people were amping up uh, coal. And this, uh, you know, fairly brilliant guy with the last name Jevin, I cannot recall his first name, um, realized that not only was um, the efficiencies gained in coal production and coal utilization, not only did it uh, actually drive increases to the actual um, overall, like everyone thought they were going to lose their jobs, and 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 um, and because the efficiency of coal usage was going up so dramatically, they thought coal miners were gonna be out of work and so on and so forth. But because of the efficiencies gained in that, we actually created far more jobs as a result. So yes, we are gonna change jobs in fleet. We are already changing jobs in fleet, but we are gonna create more jobs inadvertently as a result of being more efficient with um, with, with these tasks. And that's what uh, and that's what Jevons Paradox teaches us. And that's what is, I feel like, our incumbent upon us to make sure we educate the, the enterprise fleet customer um, on that as well. Yeah, and you know, so all right, this leads perfectly right into the next question. I mean, in terms of like efficiencies and, and jobs and everything, generative AI. I mean, that's what on everyone's lips right now. How do you think that's gonna change the industry in, in a broad sense? Yeah, so it's already changing the industry in a broad sense. I mean, um, you know, we are we are users of you know the current version of generative AI, which I wouldn't really say is is pure generative AI. So it depends on what lens we're looking in the time frame on. But I think let me let me answer it in the short term. Uh, with the longer term lens, it gets far more complex, and you start to get into the autonomous vehicles and and all that on a longer term lens. But in the next twelve to twenty four months, as we see advancements happening here, um, I think you know really what we're focused on is again we're we're looking to that owner operator customer and saying what can we do to offload? So we do a lot of this today. We've talked about a few things related to field vid fleet and field sync, customer communication, driver communications. We're doing a lot of that in AI in our current setup, but we want to take that a step further and really get um, to more of an automated fleet manager type role. So for the owner operator, uh, we feel we can get our software to the place where it's as though they have a full-time fleet manager. And that's our focus right now on the, on the 12 to 24 month lens of, um, you know, from a generator of AI perspective. Uh, certainly the future of our industry gets very exciting when you look into full autonomy on the vehicles and all that is at the backbone of generator of AI. Um, but with the shorter term lens, we look into prediction, better prediction, better efficiencies, and full-on um, fleet manager 
type function in our platform uh, that we think we can deliver in the next 24 months? Well, uh, you were really grabbed my last question. Let me do that from the top. Well, uh, Charles, you really kind of already answered my last question, but I'll give you an opportunity for some final thoughts on generative AI, AI in general, and how uh, the future, really the future is going to be changed um, with AI. Yeah, so I think we did. I think we did talk through that a little bit, but um, you know, it's something we're we're closely monitoring. But um, a, again, we go back to uh, you know the Jevons paradox piece and and understanding what new jobs it's going to create. Because yeah, uh, there's in, in our lifetimes, you know, um, the the role of the driver is probably going to be significantly mitigated. But what does that really allow for us to do? That probably allows for us to do more jobs in shorter order when you think about it, right? So that's where I get excited about the industry going. If we can get to full autonomy and full fleet management, that's a function that nobody's getting paid to drive around for the most part. I mean, yeah, the long haul truckers and stuff like that. But when you think about the field services business and stuff, that's time away from servicing other customers. It's time away in those in the route optimization, route logistics and all that sort of stuff. So when we get to that place of full generative AI, you can see how Jevons Paradox becomes a reality and we get far more efficient in just our ability to do what our core competency is, whatever that field service offering may be, that's not gonna be automated any time by, by AI. So that's where we get excited and that's what we view our role in is, is how do we get us to that point? Well, hey, if we're running three shifts, we gotta have uh, folks you know, working on those three shifts too, to your point about Jevons Paradox. That's Really true. Um, yeah. Well, real, hey, listen, Charles, really excited about the future. And, and thanks for sharing your vision of it uh, today at Fleet Momentum. Appreciate the time. Always a pleasure, Chris. All right.